Greetings, thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Friday, October 15, 2021. For today's editorial, shift to clean energy needs a shove, not just a push. Ahead of the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow in November, the International Energy Agency or IEA is sending a clear message to the participating world leaders that they need a come up with a more forceful action plan if they expect to meet or even come close to the target of reducing global warming. The IEA's dire outlook is that carbon emissions, the main culprit in global warming, will drop by just 40% by 2050 even if donor countries delivered on their pledge to raise $1 billion a year until 2020 to fund climate change programs. They didn't. Now, the IEA said the stakes have been raised and as much as $4 trillion is needed over the next decade to reach the zero carbon emission goal. That can be realized only if efforts to wean the world off fossil fuels and switch to clean and renewable energy are stepped up significantly, the IEA believes. For the moment, however, the reverse is happening. With more industries reopening following a long shutdown because of the coronavirus pandemic, the demand for coal has surged, contributing to the second largest increase in carbon dioxide emissions in history. We are witnessing an unsustainable recovery from the pandemic, noted the IEA Executive Director Fatih Birol. The agency is counting on the Glasgow conference to focus firmly on the need to encourage the faster shift to renewables like solar, wind, hydropower, and bioenergy as the world rebounds from the pandemic. The transition is not happening fast enough. Renewables only make up 20% of the world's energy supply. The world is not investing enough to meet its future energy needs. Transition-related spending is gradually picking up but remains far short of what is required to meet rising demand for energy services in a sustainable way, the IEA said. To accelerate the pace, the major economies need to do more in helping poorer countries become more resilient to climate change. The IEA sees renewable energy as the catalyst that will bring out that resiliency. Clean energy investment needs to triple by 2030. Most of it aimed at developing nations that have been long been victims of the EBB and flow of fuel prices in the world market. IEA proposes that 70% of the $4 trillion investment to achieve net zero emission flows to developing economies. In return, emerging economies must commit to reducing their carbon emissions and establish the environment that will entice private investors and renewables to come in. Funding agencies like the World Bank and International Monetary Fund can be mandated to prioritize investments in clean energy ventures in developing countries, the IEA said. The economic returns of embracing clean energy are a vast, the agency said. Renewable projects could create 13 million jobs. The production of wind turbines, solar panels, lithium-ion batteries, and other related products could blossom into $1 trillion a year industry. A developing country should be made to realize that if if you invest in old energy sources, dirty energy sources, you are risking to lose your money. If you invest in clean energy, you'll make handsome profits, the IEA said. Renewable energy investors may find the Philippines an attractive destination. We have hydropower, geothermal and solar energy, and wind power and biomass resources, but they contribute only to 26.44% of the country's electricity needs. Under the Renewable Energy Act, investors in renewable energy production are entitled to tax reductions and funding assistance from government and third parties. So far, the government has failed to lure enough investors largely because of high transaction costs, social engineering costs, lack of sustainable local technology, and caps on electricity prices. These obstacles need to be cleared if the country expects to benefit from the new focus on clean energy once the move from fossil fuels gains momentum. 
we cannot afford to be left out of this energy transition. And that was the editorial for Friday, October 15, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter and keep up with the times.